Hello everyone. Welcome to our new session on Splunk Architecture. Seam is the heart of the Security Operations Center, and Splunk is one of the best rated Seam globally, as per Forrester and Gartner. Splunk is a distributed system that aggregates, parses and analyses log data. In this session, we will help you understand how the Splunk Big Data Pipeline works, how components like the forwarder, indexer and search head interact, and the different topologies you can use to scale your Splunk deployment. Let's discuss how Splunk works, that is the stages in the data pipeline. Splunk is a distributed system that ingests, processes, and indexes log data. Splunk processes data in three stages, that is, data input stage, data storage stage, and data searching stage. In the data input stage, Splunk software consumes the raw data stream from its source, breaks it into six 4K blocks, and annotates each block with metadata keys. The metadata keys include host name, source, and source type of the data. The keys can also include values that are used internally, such as character encoding of the data stream and values that control the processing of data during the indexing stage, such as the index into which the events should be stored. Moving ahead in the data storage, there are two phases, that is, parsing and indexing. In parsing phase, Splunk software examines, analyzes, and transforms the data to extract only the relevant information. This is also known as event processing. It is during this phase that Splunk software breaks the data stream into individual events. The parsing phase has many subphases, breaking the stream of data into individual lines, identifying, parsing, and setting timestamps, annotating individual events with metadata copied from the source-wide keys, and transforming event data and metadata according to regex transform rules. In indexing phase, Splunk software writes parsed events to the index on disk. It writes both compressed raw data and the corresponding index file. The benefit of indexing is that the data can be easily accessed during searching. Lastly, in the data searching stage, you can control how you access, view, and use the indexed data. As part of the search function, Splunk software stores user-created knowledge objects, such as reports, event types, dashboards, alerts and field extract ions. The search function also manages the search process. Let's move to Splunk components. There are three main components in Splunk, that is, Splunk forwarder, that is used for data forwarding. Next, is the Splunk indexer, used for parsing and indexing the data, and at the last, we have search head, which is a graphical user interface used for searching, analyzing and reporting. Let's discuss these in detail. The Splunk forwarder is an agent you deploy on IT systems, which collects logs and sends them to the indexer. Splunk has two types of forwarders. First is the universal forwarder, that forwards the raw data without any prior treatment. This is faster, and requires less resources on the host, but results in huge quantities of data sent to the indexer. And second, we have the heavy forwarder, that performs parsing and indexing at the source, on the host machine and sends only the parsed events to the indexer. Moving on. The second component is the Splunk indexer. The indexer transforms data into events, unless it was received pre-processed from a heavy forwarder, stores it to disk and adds it to an index, enabling search ability. The indexer creates the following files, separating them into directories called buckets, that includes compressed raw data, indexes pointing to raw data, and metadata files. The indexer performs generic event processing on log data, such as applying timestamp and adding source, and can also execute user-defined transformation actions to extract specific information or apply special rules, such as filtering unwanted events. In Splunk Enterprise, you can set up a cluster of indexers with replication between them, to avoid data loss and provide more system resources and storage space to handle large data volumes. Lastly, the third component is the Splunk search head. The search head provides the UI users can use to interact with Splunk. It allows users to search and query Splunk data, and interfaces with indexers to gain access to the specific data they request. Splunk provides a distributed search architecture, which allows you to scale up to handle large data volumes, and better handle access control and geodispersed data. In a distributed search scenario, the search head sends search requests to a group of indexers, 
also called search peers. The indexers perform the search locally and return results to the search head, which merges the results and returns them to the user. Moving on. Splunk is available in three versions. First is Splunk Lite. This is the free version, that limits up to 500 MB indexing per day, and supports only a single instance. Second version is the Enterprise version. This is the paid version, with no limitation on indexing, and supports single-site clustering and multi-site clustering for disaster recovery. And, the third version is Splunk Cloud. This is provided as a service with subscription pricing. Let's now see how all components stack up against each other to make an architecture. This is a sample end-to-end -end working of Splunk. The images show a few remote forwarders, that send the data to the indexers. Based on the data present in the indexer, you can use the search head to perform functions like searching, analyzing, visualizing and creating knowledge objects for operational intelligence. The management console host acts as a centralized configuration manager, responsible for distributing configurations, app updates, and content updates to the deployment clients. The deployment clients are forwarders, indexers, and search heads. How does this flow and architecture works, let's discuss that. From top to bottom, Splunk gathers logs by monitoring files, detecting file changes, listening on ports or running scripts to collect log data. All of these are carried out by the Splunk forwarder. The indexing mechanism, composed of one or more indexers, processes the data, or may receive the data pre-processed by the forwarders. The deployment server manages indexers and search heads, configuration and policies across the entire Splunk deployment. User access and controls are applied at the indexer level, each indexer can be used for a different data store, which may have different user permissions. The search head is used to provide on-demand search functionality, and also powers scheduled searches initiated by automatic reports. The user can define scheduling, reporting, and knowledge objects to schedule searches and create alerts. Data can be accessed from the UI, the Splunk CLI, or APIs integrating with numerous external systems. I hope the video was useful. Please subscribe to stay on top of all the upcoming videos. Thank you.